against the Orioles on Masson and a large crowd on hand for game two of this four game set. It's the Red Sox and the Orioles after the long affair last night. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Thorne and welcome. These two teams are getting used to playing these extra inning ball games for the Orioles. Their fifth walk-off win tied for first in the American League. The fifth extra inning ball game against the Red Sox going back through 2012. And in all of those games, the Orioles are 5-0. and oh. Last night, some of the big names were big again, like Chris Davis, like Adam Jones, like the bullpen. But how about some of the names that you uh, might forget but mattered very much? Let's start with a whole home run. Early in the ball game, long to be forgotten, perhaps Danny Valencia launched one. It put the Orioles on the board, gave them an up early in the game. In an inning that would be a three-run inning, Nate McLeod's sacrifice helped create the opportunities later they would score on. And then in the bullpen, T.J. McFarland would come on, and yes, his first major league win. There you see the numbers for him in the majors, 15 games with that 402 ERA. In the minors, 48 and 31. T.J. McFarland last night was not forgotten by his teammates, Jim Palmer. They had a big celebration in the clubhouse for T.J. last night for number one. Well, you're right, and we thought it was going to be Kevin Gosman uh, because uh, he was trying to get his first major league uh, uh, win. He started the game, actually pitched very well. Uh, so. Uh, Dan Duquette's down on the field. Danny Valencia's walking by. He said, boy, this really, you did a great job. How'd you know? He said, well, we know he hits lefties. And uh, T.J. McFarland, one of the scouts, called me up from the West Coast today. He said, now I see why they got this rule five guy. He throws strikes. He's left-handed. He can pitch multiple innings. And he gets his first major league win. So the little guys, the roster as a whole is just better for the Orioles. We know their core guys have gotten better over the last two seasons. But their complementary players have done a terrific job. And those were some of those complimentary players from last night. So here we go. Another heavyweight battle to take place tonight in game two of this four-game set. The Orioles come in just two and a half games behind the division-leading Red Sox. Hey, nice Baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. 
Could not be a more beautiful evening here in Baltimore for a game two of this four game set. Our train game time temperature at 80 degrees. Clear skies and not much of a breeze at all here at the ballpark tonight. Train celebrating the 100th anniversary by offering irresistible financing. It's hard to stop a train really hard. Well, a great ball game last night that rolled along for 13 innings. Let's take a look at the lineup for the Red Sox tonight. Ellsbury, Victorino, and Pedroia. Ortiz, Carp, and Nava. Iglesias gets the start. Did not play last night. Middlebrooks, David Ross did not play last night either. Ortiz did and delivered a home run. Take a look at our scouting re reports on the 25-year-old right-hander out of California. Well winning, 15-5. Got called up uh, right after July 4th last year when 9 and 3, 2012. This year 6 and 2. So he's been on a roll. Won his last three starts. Dinger Fever. He does lead the um, American League in 16 home runs and 13 starts, but they seem to be mostly solos. Don't let them bother you. And then no June the swoon for Chris Tillman. 2 and 0 with a very low ERA. In fact, uh, other than a couple of uh, glitches, the starting pitching for the Orioles finally settling down where they'd like to have it, and he's been a big part of it. And honoring the military tonight, so the uniforms will reflect that in both the jerseys and the caps that are being worn by the Orioles here for this ball game. Chris Tillman with the one and one record lifetime against the Red Sox. He started in his second outing of the year back in April in a non-decision game that the Orioles won over the Red Sox three to two. The hits in that ball game six singles three hits a base on balls and a two run third against Tillman in his only outing against Boston this year. We'll take a look at the Orioles defense behind Chris Tillman, McLeod, Jones, Marquez, all glow glovers. Machado already won a gold glove. Flaherty playing like it. Same with Davis. And then Matt Wieters, two time gold glover, doing the catching. Yeah, if you look at this lineup to Gary, uh, Gary tonight, uh, none of the Red Sox, at least to this point, has ever hit a home run off of Chris Tillman. Doesn't mean they can't score runs. They've, what, scored 80 in their last 12 games in the month of June? Tillman ready to go, and the pitch will be taken up high by Ellsbury. Jacoby Ellsbury had his hit streak ended at 11 last night. He ended up with an 0 for 5. He did pick up an RBI on a fielder's choice. He'll go to second base. Flaherty time to get in front of him and record the up. For Tillman this year, he has been a pronounced fly ball pitcher. One of the reasons why he's given up the 16 home runs, which is tied for most in the American League. He has had 59% of his outs recorded on fly balls. That's a pretty high rate. With these two teams, uh, I mean, you never know, but this, if you look at the pitchers, you could have a home run derby. Dempster's uh, tied for third in home runs surrendered, but then as Jim said, Tillman gives up all these home runs and against a home run hitting team, Boston, none. Well, again, this is only a second start. And it's pretty, it's a lot of people say, and uh, Dennis Eckersley, uh, Hall of Famer, is doing their television. He said, well, how come all the home runs? And he said, they're not on curveballs and changeups. They're there when he gets behind. The hitters will look for fastballs. We saw Gosman, uh, Kevin, throwing, what, 93 to 98, 97 last night? That's going to go to center. Jones will have to play it on a bounce. Victorino. He's got an eight game hit streak now as he picks up the one out single here in the first inning. Same thing he did in the ball game last night. So Victorino on and that will bring up Dustin Pedroia. And of all the bats in the lineup this is the one that Tillman has had the greatest struggle with. There's a lot of pitchers can say that Pedroia is five for 14. Lifetime off Tillman. Pedroia had a one for five in the ball game last night. Yeah, the minute they got the ball up, he he hit it hard. He lined out to third, could have had another hit in the first inning, lined into a double play, and next time up a good slider, next time up bad slider, and boy, he drilled it into left field. Really good high ball hitter. And as you mentioned, Chris Tillman likes to pitch up in the strike zone, so it's not a very good matchup for him. Victorino will go back to the bag at first base. Not a lot of running opportunities for two ball clubs that do like to run this season. Shane Victorino has picked up five stolen bases, seven chances. But uh, they're concerned about whether or not he's really healthy enough to be running. 
did not last night. Pedroia will foul that one straight back. The home runs have been a problem not only for Tillman but for the Orioles overall. The most home runs allowed. The Orioles have given up 95. Then the Astros, the Jays, the Brewers, and the Padres. And uh, we've continued to mention one of the problems for the Orioles has been they've been out homered here at Camden Yards 55 to 42 on the year. And the ball is fouled away. Stays at two strikes on Pedroia with Ortiz on deck. Chris Tillman, nine and three last year, already six and two on the season. In home starts, he's got a win and two losses with a 5 3 1 ERA. Lifetime nine and nine here at Camden Yards with an ERA of 4.7 in this ballpark. 0 2 delivery, and Pedroia swings and fouls another one off. And that's what he does. For a little guy, swings hard, great plate coverage. Amazing uh, on base percentage for him. He has reached safely now in 22 straight games, hitting 306 in the ball games. That's reaching base, not necessarily via a hit. 0 2 the count. Runner at first base and a half swing this time into right. I think Mark Kakis there. Pedroia retired and Victorino back. Well, you're talking about uh, what Pedroia did on a couple of times. So most foul balls induced. Now Cliff Lee throws more strikes than anybody. Verlander with fabulous stuff, and then right behind him, uh, Tillman, Hamels, who struggles this year, or Clayton Kershaw, who is one of Cy Young, one of the most dominant pitchers, and then Shelby Miller, the young pitcher who's having a fabulous start for the uh, maybe one of the best teams, or if not the best team in baseball, the Cardinals. Pedroia fouled off three and he has that yeah. bat already. <laughs> but what slowed down the bat and this is what Chris has been doing lately is that change up. And that's what he got him to fly out to right field on. David Ortiz with an 0 for 3 off Tillman will take the pitch for a strike. Ortiz has had a hot bat. Shift is on against him putting Flaherty way out there in right field. Nobody on the third base position with Machado playing shortstop for the Orioles here with this defensive alignment. 0 oh, 1 count on Ortiz. And Ortiz will take it up and in, knocked down by Weeters. Runner will stay at first base. Tillman has had a couple of hit batters, four wild pitches on the season. Last night we saw Ortiz backed off the plate a couple of times. Not a bad idea in part of the game, especially when you have somebody with all the power that he's got. Try and keep him from. Digging in. Yeah, he, yeah, if not it up by the chin, uh, at least uh, maybe try to make him dance a little bit, see if Big Poppy has any rhythm. 1 1 delivery on the way, and that'll be taken outside for a ball. Well, he hit the one home run, Gary, and as you noted, had a couple of what, probably two or three other home run swings. So, you know, if you look at his month of June, it's a uh, it came in 11 for 48, which is 229, but he has hit five home runs. He is the leader in the majors in home runs in June with five and uh, the American League leader in RBIs in the month of June. He has picked up 14. Count out even two balls and one strike. Victorino the runner at first base being held by Davis. And a long look in the 2 1. And Ortiz will take the pitch and uh, gets a three ball one strike out. Yeah, it is almost impossible to get David Ortiz to chase when you're behind him if you're pitching. And there's three and one count. That's what he lives for. He'll take the walk to respective manage John Farrell in his first year with the Red Sox. Buck Showalter came over in uh, 2010. Three ball one strike count timeout asked for by Ortiz. Ortiz has struck out only 27 times and drawn only one less walk 26 free passes on the year. He's got 13 doubles a triple <laughs> and the 14 home runs. We underline the triple for David Ortiz. Well, it's a good sign only because he had all kinds of leg problems uh, last year and then early this season and he'll draw the walk here. So Tillman surrenders the first walk. And there goes the Ofer and walks. The Orioles did not walk a batter in the ball game last night. Time for our AT&T Mobility Trivia Fact. Tillman has not allowed a home run. Seven starts against the Red Sox in his career. But 29 home runs and 24 starts against the rest of the American League East. Uh, that is a go-figure stat right there. 
you got the answer to that you go to the head of the line. Two on here is Carp. Well this guy will test you he's hit four in the month of June one of them last night. Had a one for three in the ball game last night takes a big count on that one good stop by Wheaters. Carp getting the start at first base again tonight. And an 0 1 count on him. He was not supposed to be in the ball game last night. Napoli came out of the ball game with an illness, and uh, the first at bat by Carp was his seventh home run of the year. 0 1 delivery. So a big early first inning here is Tillman. One out away from getting out of it, and the Red Sox one hit away from getting a run up on the board. And he comes in uh, with runners in scoring position at. 423 has been a red hot. They got him in February from the uh, Mariners. 1-1 one, one delivery to Carp and that will miss outside from Tillman. So Tillman playing a little dangerously here working behind the hitters. Carp has had three home runs over the five game hit streak that he is in uh, the midst of right now. Victorino the single at second Ortiz with a walk on at first base. Here's the 2 1 delivery, and that ball put up in the air to right field. Nick Marquegas backing up. Looks like he's got room at the wall, and he does. 373 away. No runs, one hit, no errors, two left on base. The Orioles coming up. To you by Southwest Airlines, McLeod Machado and Mark Kakis, Jones, Davis, and Weeders, Hardy, Dickerson, and Flaherty, Manny Machado continuing his hit streak with a two for seven last night. And the veteran uh, Ryan Dempster, 35. This is his 16th year in the big leagues. Well, less is more. And uh, a lot of sliders, a lot of splitters. Uh, he's averaged over nine strikeouts per nine innings. Mixed support when they score him a bunch of runs. He could win in his four wins, 33 runs in his six losses, only seven. And then the veteran presence. He's uh, against the Orioles, only one earned run in each of his first three starts. Nate McLeod leading it off for the Orioles. McLeod had an 0 for 3 in the ball game last night in at third base is Middlebrooks against him and the 0 1 delivery that goes to left field. Nava is there puts it away two pitches and the out. That'll bring up Eddie Machado and he does bring a career high hit streak of 11 games into this second time. He has reached that mark. He did it the first of the year. Picked up a couple of hits in the ball game last night to go two for seven and had an RBI. Machado now leads the majors. That's majors. 92 hits and 28 doubles. And shows bunt just to get Middlebrooks moving in a little bit, and he does. The Machado continues an unbelievable season and he's putting under his belt 1 0 delivery and now right off Ross yeah, David Ross mm -hmm. this is why I catch 
Maybe not every day. And right square in the middle of the mask. Mm. Well, last night, what salt? Jared Salto Lamaki had his mask knocked off and went sideways. It's a good time to talk about what I was talking about with Ross before the game. He, he, I said, how do you describe the matchup between these two teams that they play so tight, so tough, so intense? He said, go back to John L. Sullivan. Go back and look at the Boston strong boy. I said, what do you mean? He said he was a bare knuckle, the last heavyweight bare knuckle champion to fight. And he said, that's what these games are like. They're like the rounds that Sullivan fought bare knuckle. And I went back and I did look it up. And he's absolutely right. John L. Sullivan was a Southie. That ball is ripped into left field. That's going to be a hop off the wall. Played in the corner by Nava going to second base. Is Manny Machado a career high 12 game hit streak? Yeah, when you start talking about guys under 21, you talk about Griffey, you talk about Trout, you talk about Robin Yount, and he just gets all over this fastball. Ryan Dempster, I mean, he's got the splitter, the slider, but 88, that's about where he's going to top out, maybe 89 miles per hour, so in the middle of the plate. And the amazing thing about Manny Machado, and this is how well he's played in all facets of the game, is he hadn't hit a home run since we were out in Anaheim, and nobody even thinks about that because of all the other things he's been able to do to help this team win. The Orioles want to take advantage of these situations a whole lot earlier and more so than they did last night. They were four for 14 with runners in scoring position in the ball game last night. And they left 16 men on base in that 13 inning game that the Orioles won five to four. The Red Sox stranded only four in that ball game. So the first RBI opportunity in that situation goes to Nick Marquecas. Nick's got a five game hit streak with a one for six that he put up in the ball game last night. And Dempster will miss inside to him. Marcakis, a two for six with a home run lifetime off Ryan Dempster. Well, the O's chance to get on the board early. The Orioles, Manny Machado being held by Inglacius, the shortstop. Short lead at second, at least to start, and Dempster steps off. Yeah, pretty good numbers uh, for a veteran guy. The home runs at 14, but 227 were runners in scoring position. So that's league average are right around 260, so it's a lot lower than the rest of the league. Ross able to fight that and keep it out in front of him, holding the runner on at second base. For Dempster this year, that 231 opponent batting average is the 11th best in the league. Left-handers 228, right-handers 234. Not much difference. Nine home runs have been hit by the right-handers and five by the lefties. As John Farrell's staff has continued to put up some real good numbers, especially on the road. Two ball, one strike delivery on the way. Marquegas got jammed down to first base. Karp is there. He'll go himself. Two down, runner at third. Let's take a look at the uh, defense for the Red Sox, Nava, Ellsbury, and Victorino. Uh, Shane with three gold gloves, 2008 to 2010. Middlebricks, who's been struggling a little bit, the Wiz. The Glesia, they, they brought him up last year for his glove. Well, this year they glove and bat Pedroia, MVP in 2008, and Mike Carp over at first, David Ross behind the plate. Adam Jones stands in. There's the 298 batting average last night, a one for six. A lot of it bats, obviously, in the 13 inning ball game last night. So you had some averages, either the chance to take a nice jump or <laughs> drop a couple of points. And for Adam, it dropped a couple of points down below 300. Adam with runners in scoring position, hitting 280 on the season with a home run, 25 RBIs in these situations. Now, what he did, though, is he got Chris Davis to the plate with that single to right field in the 10th and excuse me in the 13th and he said yeah I know you're going to tell me I need to hit the ball to right field I said you just get it anywhere you want just do it more often. <laughs> well I know delivery to him inside. Well Adam's going to turn 28 and he's got enough at bats now where you get to get to know yourself a little bit and when you're over swinging he said yeah I know I'm swinging too hard. We'd tell you that was Buck Showalter, but we can't see him. <laughs> Camouflage? Yes. 
You got to explain them. They're not good. And that will be taken inside for a ball. And Jones gets ahead on the count three and oh. I'm still trying to ponder the bare knuckles. <laughs> that would have been a lot of fun. <laughs> and there were no what? No, the round, I'm sure you'll get into it. No, no time. Time no for the rounds. 3 0 delivery on the way. That's their four strike. Adam Jones saying after ball game last night, the zeros were awesome. Talking about the numbers put up by the uh, staff last night. I think the most impressive part was no walks in 13 innings. That's the highest walking team in baseball. Speaking of Boston, I don't want to jinx us, but we just went after them. We went after everyone. Ball game last night, no walks for the Red Sox. That'll go to shortstop. Up with it is Iglesias. He'll make the play, and that'll do it. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Back to work. Tillman. Hi, I'm J.J. Hardy with the Baltimore Orioles. Wanted to thank all the military personnel that serve our nation. You are the true heroes. And uh, J.J. absolutely right. And a number of them on hand here at the ballpark for the ball game tonight. And those T-shirts that you saw were given out before the game tonight. Those are not given out. You earn them. And a few, few have been earned right there. We go to the second inning. Nava, Iglesias, and Middlebrooks coming up. The Orioles knocking a game off the lead of the Red Sox with the victory in the ball game last night. Red Sox now lead the Orioles by two and a half games with New York's loss yesterday and the Orioles win. Orioles move into second place a half game ahead of the Yankees. Tillman's delivery and that is in there for a strike. Now to last night, not a one for five, enough to keep his hit streak alive at seven games for Daniel Nava, who's having an outstanding offensive start, 296. And the pitch is down low. Tillman with a one and one. Yeah, he's won their last two games with the game winners, one of them a uh, two run home run on Wednesday night. And there's the numbers in that seven game hitting streak. Been red hot in the month of June. One one delivery to it. Nava leads all the outfielders in the American League in on base percentage and is second in RBIs for American League outfielders. He's got 44. Well, one of the great stories in baseball you know, trying to go to Santa Clara, couldn't even make the team, was the equipment manager. Went to what, San, the College of San Mateo, eventually went back to Santa Clara, didn't get drafted. Played in an independent league. I was talking about it yesterday. He said that his hitting instructor said you just have to be able to figure out how to get the barrel of the bat to the ball. And if you overswing and you swing at balls and you do all those things, all the things we always talk about. And then last year, the wrist injuries when he finally has a chance to get to the big league. So he's one of those guys that have made the Red Sox and put them where they are. Two for seven off Tillman lifetime. And he'll foul that one. Right back into the screen. Switch hitter. It's uh, 258 right handed. Much better average from the 
left side of the plate where he's hitting 312 and also more power. Seven of his nine home runs hit left handed. Two ball, two strike out from Tillman. The shift is on. That goes the other way down the line. The Clout, the long run. That's going to be a foul ball and a break for the Orioles on that one. We were talking about Sullivan just to end up on what because Ross so surprised me with it in the dugout talking about it today the Red Sox catcher John L. Sullivan was a Southie from Boston Southside called the Boston strong boy the fight that changed all fights was Jake Kilrain's fight against Sullivan back in 1898 we were trying to figure out how many rounds there were in that fight it ended up being a 75 round fight is what we found out was in Richburg Mississippi in 1889 literally Kilrain threw in the towel before the 76 round and I looked up the rules that were applied then there were no time limits on the rounds a round was when you got knocked down you had 30 seconds to get back up and eight more seconds to come to scratch which meant to the center of the ring so there were 75 knockdowns in that fight which John L. Sullivan, by the way, won. He was the first athlete ever to earn a million dollars. And coming back to what this has to do with this game, Ross says that's what these games are like. The Red Sox and the Orioles, bare-knuckled, heavyweight bouts. Yeah, Nava just won the skirmish right there. He went around 1-1 one, one by walking. And he fouled off some pitches. This is, could you imagine, no, coming up, and, you know, Euclid used to play on this team. They'd foul balls off, and then you got the Droya. Flicking him foul and Ortiz, who doesn't swing at balls. A lot of good role models. And here is Jose Iglesias. No play. Take a look at our cheek inside the numbers, and um, here's a guy, the glove guy. That was last year. Got called up, didn't get a lot of at bats, didn't hit, hit very well, or with a lot of extra base hits. And then this year, because of uh, Middlebrooks coming up with a bad back, look at those numbers. And uh, it's just a pleasure. You know, he's going to play on the left side. That means either third or short. Tonight he's at short, but he can flat out pick it at shortstop. You see the hit streak that he's got going with that 14 number. He is 0 for 4 lifetime off Tillman. Did not play last night. And we'll foul that one back. He's not had a hit against the Orioles this year. He only had uh, three at bats in the series in Boston. The only time other time these teams have met and he went 0 for 3 and does not hit well against the Orioles overall with just a 188 batting average. Two strike count on Iglesias. Leadoff man Navas on at first base. And that's going to be caught. Machado. No play at first base. Yeah, a little bit of what happened early. Uh Last night with Kevin Gosman in the first inning, Pedroia lines into Manny Machino, Machado, but this this time it's only one. A little hang and change up. You can see Islacius already with 20 of his hits to left field, so much quicker bat. You don't want to be hitting it down to Manny Machado. Very difficult to get it by him. So one out recorded. The base running by Nava to get back to the bag. Here's Middlebrooks. Middlebrooks a two for five in the ball game last night. And a swing and a miss. So Middlebrook's Matt Baby coming back. He's hit in two of the three since returning from the DL on Monday with that lower back problem after some rehab games with Triple A Pawtucket. Tillman with the 0 1 count. Runner off first base, and that'll be fouled off the other way. Tillman. Gets ahead here, 0 and 2. Middlebrooks, before the injury, had been struggling with the bat. How much that had to do with his back, no one will ever know, not even him. But he hopes with the back feeling better, the average will come up. 0 2 delivery on the way, and that's again late on it. Foul away, stays at 0 and 2. Now we have seen for Chris Tillman that the velocity usually goes up as the game progresses. So we talked about no June swoon 2 and 0 with a 208 in his first two starts in the month of June. Now he does have that cut fastball looking for a ground ball but as you mentioned a fly ball pitcher would love to get a ball at one of his infielders and get a quick two outs. Oh it's a delivery that'll go to right field Mark Hickus. He's got it. Two down. 
The Adam Jones Fan Challenge is here. Visit Facebook.com slash Mass and Orioles before June 16. Submit a video challenging Adam to any competition of your choice. Adam will pick his favorites, and the public will vote to decide who wins. The Adam Jones Fan Challenge is presented by Care First, who encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier lifestyle. Two down. Runner remains at first on the leadoff walk, and Ross coming to the plate. The catcher not in the ball game last night. With that 194 batting average. Yeah, big, strong, and a pull hitter. And the pitch will be taken for a strike. Only three for his last 25. Talking about the walks that did not happen in last night's game and already two to the Red Sox in this game. They are second in walks in the American League. Last night, 47 times the Red Sox came to the plate against the seven Oriole pitchers and did not draw a free pass. They have picked up a walk in each of the first two innings so far of this ball game. One ball, one strikeout. And foul back into the screen. One and two. Chris Tillman with a couple of wins in his last two starts and in fact has had uh, three wins in a no decision game in his last four last outing against Tampa Bay three runs four hits six innings as the Orioles had a 10 7 win in that game one two delivery and that again fouled away. So yeah. Tillman's living up to the numbers we talked about regarding. Oh no, yes. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have a two. He does not throw a two seam fastball, so he doesn't throw a lot of grounders. The one number that I've looked at over the last couple of starts, which is why he's pitching better, is a curveball percentage has gone up about 20 percent. Went from 45 all the way to 65, and that can be his strikeout pitch. All right, Kegas will drift over towards the line and will have room and makes the pitch. So a leadoff walk is left right there at first base, and it remains scoreless. Brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Four million members, four million stories. Navy Federal Credit Union. And by DynCorp International, we serve today for a better tomorrow. We are tonight's game on Masson, celebrating the U.S. Army's birthday. The Army, the largest and oldest established branch of the military. We thank all the past and current members of the U.S. Army for their work and their dedication in protecting our country. Army. And a swearing in ceremony as is held here at Camden Yards each year on the state. And those were some of the young men and women who were sworn into the Army in pregame ceremonies today. Those of us in the booth careful not to raise our right hand <laughs> while the ceremony was going on. <laughs> but they did. And now the Sergeant Major's in charge of your life. 
Deep to left field, way back. Chris Davis again. Goodbye, home run. A major league leading 22nd of the year. to be in that pitching meeting. So what's he now? He's 10 for 25 with six home runs, 10 RBIs. Last 25 at bats. Woof. And up high to Weeders. And you can't pitch around somebody when uh, he leads off an inning. So this is what he does so well. Uh, came out on Tuesday, hit for an extra half hour, had been 0 for 16. Walked a couple times that night, game winner. Leaders off the fist to right field, Victorino. We take a look at our Hollywood Casino League leaderboard, slot stables dining, the ultimate triple play at Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races. With that home run, the uh, Orioles, the largest run differential, first three innings. Red Sox have a plus 52. The Orioles second now with a plus 36. Tigers, Angels, and Rays in the top five. And for Chris Davis, he continues to be a nightmare for the Red Sox. And here is Hardy. J.J. with an 0 for 4 in the ballgame last night. Chris Davis now this season has three home runs and five RBIs against the Red Sox. That is his seventh career home run against Boston. He got the game-winning hit in the ballgame last night in extra innings. He has had two of the game-winning hits. In the five extra inning games these teams have played over the last two years. And in addition to that, of course, was the winning pitcher in another one of those <laughs> ball games back in May of 2012 in the 17 inning game. So he has beaten the Red Sox every way possible. And the pitch to Hardy's there for a strike one and two. He's a multitasker. <laughs> I mean that game with the strikeout of Adrian Gonzalez was something you just never forget that Gonzalez is trying to hit a home run. He gets the count and then he strikes him out on it's about as good as split finger fastball we saw in 2012. And he did it just to pitch a little bit in high school and college and there you go. And he was joking last after the game last night thinking about whether or not once again he was going to have to pitch in the ball game. 2 2 delivery. Down to third, short hop, Middlebrooks. Yeah, he's not getting any easy hops down there. Two down. Maryland Lottery hit a big contestant of the game, Michael Long from Middle River. Michael, you've won 500 for being selected, 100 more for every Orioles hit, and 500 for any Orioles home run in the fifth inning. For your chance to be the Maryland Lottery hit a big contestant of the game, play five-card cash and go to mdlottery.com slash Orioles. So two down. Here's Chris Dickerson, the designated hitter in the ball game tonight. Two down, and he will take the pitch up high for a ball. The Orioles are the number one home hitting, home run hitting team in the American League. Texas is ranked second. The Red Sox are fourth in homers in the American League so far. These are numbers of players by the Orioles who've had some success against the Red Sox starter. Yeah, he's just going to uh, change speeds. Tough, really tough on the righties. That's why the numbers for Adam are glowing because of his slider. And then, uh, as we mentioned, over nine strikeouts per nine innings. Haven't struck anybody out tonight, but that, a lot of that has to do with that split finger fastball that he uses as a changeup. But he's had a 15 years, as we mentioned. This will be his 16th. And there's the splitter that just runs away. Started as a starter, then uh, went to Cincinnati from the Marlins. Then he became a uh, a closer for the Cubs, and then he became a starter for the Cubs. And then last year, they traded down to Texas. And in all those years, has never pitched to Camden Yards before yeah. tonight. He adds another ballpark to his long list. That'll be fouled off by Dickerson, and that will hold the count at a ball and two strikes. He used to throw in the mid 90s, and uh, we did see one in 91. Average fastball is 88. 
But what he can do is if you tell him OK Chris Dickerson's a better fastball hitter he's able to get you out with the slow stuff in and out. Here's the one two delivery and he's gone. So there is the first strikeout but the Orioles pick up the run as Dempster has given up now seven home runs to hitters leading off an inning and that's exactly the best part for Chris Davis. That's when he gets them one nothing. Orioles baseball on Masson is brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you and by Antwerpen Toyota. When Jack says yes, you pay less at Antwerpen Toyota in Howard County Auto Park. Visit AntwerpenToyota.com today. Tomorrow is a four o'clock game, the third of the four game set. Freddie Garcia, John Lackey, the scheduled starters, and then Sunday at 1 30, Miguel Gonzalez and John Lester, the scheduled starters. Big crowd on hand for the ball game here in this Friday night, and a weather-wise a spectacular yeah. night to be at the yard. Here's Jacoby Ellsbury back to the top of the order against Tillman. Ellsbury grounded out his first time up, and will take the pitch for a strike. Ellsbury's only had a couple of hits now in 19 at bats against the Orioles on the season. Lifetime of 339 hitter against the Orioles. 0 oh, 1 pitch to him off the end of the bat towards second base. Flaherty surrounds it. Gets the out. The latest voting numbers for the 2013 All Star Game in. You've got Chris Davis, Hardy Jones, perhaps uh, starting in that game. Machado, Weeders, Marquecas, McClouth, all with a chance to be in there. So vote for your favorite now while voting continues at Orioles.com slash vote orange. If you vote up to 35 times, you will be eligible for that All Star jersey that's going to be autographed by the O's All Stars. That's Orioles.com slash vote orange. All star game coming up in New York at City Field. 1 0 count. Shane Victorino. Victorino a single, extending his hit streak to eight games. Tillman's pitch to him will be inside 2 0. Well, he seems to be very content. Maybe it'll change here 2 0, but. You can see why, as we mentioned last night, very hard to strike out. He really hits the ball back up the middle, doesn't overswing. And you don't want to be walking guys in front of Pedroia and Ortiz. Victorino has picked up a dozen free passes while striking out uh, just 19 times. Remember, he's missed time, so it's only his. 40th game of the season as he had been on the DL. Yeah, the hamstring he hurt is that back hamstring, the, the left one. And he draws the walk here. So Tillman has walked three. This one with one away. It just doesn't seem like he can get in a rhythm. Uh, usually the velocity, uh, as we mentioned, it gets better, but you know, he did hit 92 once, but he's right, right around 90. 
Tillman walked four in his first game of the year against Minnesota, and that is the high in walks on the year. Yeah, almost as many balls as strikes tonight, and he averages 17.7, almost 18 pitches. And you know what the Red Sox want. They want him out of there. 13 inning game. Get to the bullpen as soon as you can. Pedroia going after it, pops it up first base. Davis. Does he see it? Yes, yes he does. does. Yeah. Pedroia's old for two. And I'm wondering uh, right there at 92 out of nowhere and right in on the fist. Really good fastball hitter. So I think part of Chris Tillman being 6'5 and yeah, he does have the camouflage hat. Very deceptive wind up, very easy. And then all of a sudden, the ball jumps on you. He made a really good pitch to get Pedroia out. That's what it takes. So a big second out leaving the runner at first base and here is David Ortiz. Ortiz started the day 10th in batting average at 306 in the American League. He's also driven in 49 runs tied for fifth with his teammate Mike Napoli. And the throw over and Victorino back to the bag. And Ortiz of course did not get going until after the season had started. He missed games. Since returning uh, certainly hasn't missed anything at the plate. He's had three home runs in his last six ball games. Two down shift on Ortiz will take it. Weeders blocks it. Ball one. Tillman pitches by the book if you will with the idea of first strikes. If he gets the first strike opponents hit only 2 0 3 against him if he falls behind 1 and 0 the average jumps from 2 0 3. To 287. 1 0 count. That one goes the other way. McClough is there. While the infield shifts, the outfield plays straight up on Ortiz and he put it right where McClough was standing. He could be on the skiff too. Terry here. There's the swearing in ceremony that we talked about earlier. The uh, Colonel doing the work there and then throwing out the first pitch. Colonel Dillon, Colonel Rice, Sergeant Major Morin, and Colonel Rothstein. And then they took the field, military members with the Orioles before the uh, ball game for the national anthem. So great tributes tonight from the Orioles to a number of the military folks who are on hand and now are fans watching a ball game. Ground ball towards second base. Pedroia is there. And Flaherty on one pitch is the first out of the third inning. Yeah, Ryan Dempster is going to do the Oriole act tonight where he's not going to mess around and walk anybody. And if you're a veteran pitcher, like we said, this is his 16th year. He's a jack of all trades. He used to throw in the mid 90s. He only worked five innings in the game in Boston, giving up the three runs and three hits. The rain delay took him out of the ball game. 
And it's a 43 minute rain delay. He did not return. So that's the only outing he's had against the Orioles and he, this year. And he was non decision. And the pitch will be taken up high. Nate McLeod, who fly it out to left field his first time up. In for the Orioles, bottom half of the third inning, one nothing lead on the Chris Davis home run. In at third base, Middlebrooks infield shifted, playing him to pull. And pitched inside and missed two and one. Orioles have improved their home record now to 18 and 14. Red Sox still the best on the road at 20 and 13 in the American League, but but Joe Walter's team, big four game series. I mean, all these games against the division teams this year are vital. Farrell's team has been in first place this season, what 56 days now. They were never in first place last year for one day, and a lot of people thought they wouldn't be in first place ever this year. They have been a surprise team in that regard. Well, they got healthy. They added some players, and nice to start out eight and 18, 18 and eight, which is what they did in the month of April. Up high, McLeod will draw the walk out of him. Dempster surrenders his first three pass with one away here in the third. The Orioles, when they win and score five or more runs, which they did yesterday, it means you get 50% off your regular menu price online order. Just enter promo code Orioles5 at PapaJohns.com when ordering. Valid at participating Baltimore area Papa John's. That applies for today. So it means, folks, get that half price pizza for the ball game. Manny Machado. So you got a really, you got a veteran pitcher, really good th throwing catcher. 42% last year, 37.5 over the last couple of years. Comes out of the, uh, at least recently, talking about David Ross out of the Atlanta organization. So you know it's all about holding runners and what your pitching staff can do. And then some home runs because that's what <laughs> Atlanta has done a lot of this year. One down, McCough's not going, and the pitch to Machado is strike. Against Dempster, base dealers are six out of seven. And McCough. Taking a look at Bobby Dickerson as is Manny Machado. Machado doubled his first time up. Leads the majors in two baggers and he has a career high 12 game hit streak. Decent lead at first base. Not going. Machado will take the pitch for a strike. Little wrinkle on that one too and the count goes to 0 2 on Manny. Yeah, he's only gotten two balls at fastballs in the middle of the plate, and Manny hit one of them from double, and Chris Davis hit a home run to left center field. Other than that, he has uh, really changed speeds well, mixed his pitches up, and stayed out of the middle of the zone, usually around the knees. Here's the 0-2 delivery to him. Machado outside, nice scoop made by Ross to keep that ball in play. Manny first in hits, first in uh, doubles. He is seventh in runs and eighth in average. Coming into the games today. The real shot at going to the All Star game is a selection. McLeod, the opportunity with the stolen bases and the numbers he's put up, now hanging around the 300 batting average. And again, he'll be back to the bag. Nate and Ellsbury, one and two in stolen bases. Ellsbury's got 30. Nate has uh, 22. 22 out of 24. Ellsbury out there in center field, the speedster for the Red Sox. Kevin Gosman being sent down. If you missed that today after the ball game last night, the Orioles starter, the youngster. Went back to Triple A, and Jake Arietta has been called up. Arietta is now available in the bullpen. But Joe Walter said he could be used as a starter if the need arises while he's here. But for now, he's in the pen as a long man. One-two delivery on the way down to first base. Base hit by Carr, making the turn. McLeod he'll stay as Victorino gets it in, and there's pure Manny Machado. Find a way. They hit him where they ain't, then he does. Yeah, he uh, started doing this a little bit last year, but in spring training, boy, everybody you talk to, using the whole field, staying behind the ball. I mean, this is a good pitch. And because you have to hold the runner on, 
hard to defend that hole. I mean, that same hole for lefties is there for righties, and Manny uses it as well as anybody on this ball club. Trying to reach the 100 hit mark before anybody else in baseball. He's got 93, 94 now with the two hits in the game. He also leads the American League with 27 multi hit games. He was tied with Mike Trout and Miguel Cabrera coming into today's play. Nick Marquez, Orioles have runners on at first and second base. And that is in their first strike. Take a look at our Jeep inside the numbers. Uh, this is what Nick Marquez does at home. And uh, you can see the numbers, third most. A lot of fastballs, changeups. This is why he's almost a lifetime 300 hitter. He can hit everything you throw up there. He and hangs in there really well against lefties. Inside to him from Dempster. Nick, a couple of hits, seven at bats, including a home run off Ryan Dempster. The Orioles again with an opportunity here. They're 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position. That coming in the first inning. And yeah, made a good pitch on Nick. Just was able to uh, get the ball down and in, but way in. Arcagas had to scoop that one out. Ellsbury in center. Trying to make a throw to third here. McLeod's going to go. Throw will come into second base instead. Arcagas retired, and there are two away. Celebrate Father's Day at Oriole Park. The Birds hosting the Red Sox for the Sunday afternoon 135 game. First 10,000 men, 21 and over, will get the Father's Day travel kit. Make some new memories. Have a great day at the yard with the family. 888 bird or go to Orioles.com. Beautiful orchid from the daughter today. Got to like that. For me. You? Really? Yeah. Well, why not? It's a nice Father's Day gift. Purple orchid. Just reminding everybody else out there who's got a dad. <laughs> yeah. It's always appreciated. And my daughter Kelly said, where are you going to be? I said, yeah. uh, well, I'll be on my way to Detroit, but I'll be here at the ballpark. That'll be a ground ball down to third. Middlebrook's going to have a very tough play. Barehanded to save a run. Didn't get him. Base hit and an RBI for Adam Jones as Nate McLeod scores and the Orioles lead it to another. Yeah, good pitch. Bad result for Dempster. Adam Jones a uh, little jam shot the first time. This time a little uh, looks like a slider. What's that ball just slide down and away. Try to cover it. But you hit it right off the end of the bat and then that infield roller. And because look how far Middle Brooks is back and that's where he should be playing. But when you do hit this kind of ball he makes it pretty close but Adam runs too well. So there's your second run. Adam Jones getting the uh, RBI number 40. And another two out base hit for Adam. And here's Chris Davis. Davis is 22nd home run leading off the second inning. And that has become a habit for Chris Davis. Nine home runs leading off an inning this season. He is number one in the majors in doing so. It's pretty amazing. And he does it against Dempster, who, as we mentioned, has had a problem in reverse. Dempster has given up seven home runs to hitters leading off an inning. He's given up 15 total. Chris now has a four game hit streak as well. Runners on first and second with two down. And Davis takes a strike. Yeah, looking away and not going to swing it in. And that's the, the big difference I see in Chris Davis. It doesn't. If you go back to last night, he had struck out, what, three out of the last four? And then he said, I had to get jammed. I have to wait a little longer. And he did. And he got the game winner in the 13th inning. 1-1 one, one delivery on the way to him. And that's going to be fouled off. An off-speed delivery. Off the end of the bat, one and two. You know, so in and out, you know, add a little bit, take a little bit off. That's what Ryan Dempsey is all about at this particular time in his career. Turned 36 earlier this season. One ball, two strike count on Davis. That walk to McClough resulting in a base runner who scored. Davis is going to go to Pedroia who's got it. 
and hangs on. But the Orioles will pick up one run on a couple of hits. Two are left on base. Orioles up by two. The first American League team says 71 to win two games of 18 or more innings in a season. They did that against the Yankees last night. The A's Yankees umpires in that game, they were just coming off a 16 inning game that they'd done on June 5. Think how happy they were. And the Cubs yesterday beat the Reds 6 5 and 14. The night before, the Blackhawks beat the Bruins three overtimes. If you take the total combined time for those two teams, they took nine hours and 45 minutes. To put two W's up on the game because the Blackhawks game started at 722 Central and ended with the winning goal at 0 0 0 0 midnight. And in each case, those teams said they'd have gone on forever if it would have meant a W. <laughs> Some long games. In fact, this year's uh, already, I think they're only one game shy of the most extra innings played. In the first half of a major league season, something like that. The numbers are way up in extra inning ball games. The number of innings played. Well, we went out to play the Angels, talking about the Orioles in uh, what early May. They had just lost to the, the A's in that first game. I think went 20, 21 innings, 21 innings, and then Jerome Williams he had pitched six innings in relief. And that's how he got his first start. They go, well, you know, you pitched on Monday, you can pitch on Saturday <laughs> if you're tuned you up a little six innings in that extra inning game. Mm. Two ball, one strike count. Tillman's delivery, and he got that one by him. Yeah, he just missed a three run home run in the first inning on a changeup. And he just got under it, and as we mentioned, he's been red hot and hitting over 440 coming in in, in the month of June with a lot of power. Carp will take the pitch down low. Mike Carp, 327 on the year. And Month of June has certainly added to those numbers. Tillman's delivery to him, and Carp will take it up high. So there is the fourth walk, equaling a season high, and it is a leadoff walk here in the fourth inning. Our PNC minor league report brought to you by PNC Bank for the Achiever in you. You take a look at the numbers for Mike Wright with Bowie Double A last night against Reading and on the year six and zero, oh, three nine two ERA. Solid numbers. You see the innings pitched and the strikeouts almost the same, and only half, less than half, number of walks surrendered. Mike Wright. Well, Chris came in at what 68 percent of the uh, leadoff of every inning, getting them out. That number's going down tonight. It's just not a good habit to get into. He's trying to establish all his pitches. I think he's thrown one curveball over. He's probably thrown 10 or 11 of them. And then probably hit the best command tonight is with the changeup. He doesn't throw that many of them. I think he threw 16 in his last game, which is a seasonal high in one particular game. And that's foul back. Now we got one to try and drive right there. 
Leadoff batter has been on now uh, twice in the four innings. Both these pitchers have had their problems with that. Tillman retires 67 percent of leadoff batters and for Ryan Dempster only 60 percent which is fairly low number for a starting pitcher to have that many guys on to start. One ball one strike count on Nava. Good lead at first for Carp. Davis holding the bag on him and the pitch is taken down low one ball one strike count. Now here with a left handed batter if you look at Davis at first rather than playing that off the bag holding position even with this left handed batter up he is on the bag. The infield is shifted over. So it covers a little bit of that hole between first and second with Flaherty cheating towards first base. 2 1 delivery on the way and foul back again. Let's see. So the velocity is going up. But you keep getting in these 2 0, 2 1, 2 2 counts. Sooner or later, the Red Sox are going to do some damage. And it won't really matter they, for Chris Tillman as he did last year when they. They got him almost six runs a game. Uh, this year it's at 5.78. They've been scoring runs for him. But you only have two to work with tonight so far. 2 2 delivery on the way. Nava with a chopper to first base. Davis will put the tag on him on the way by. And Carp will move down to second base. One away. Our Volkswagen baseball moment in history is brought to you by Volkswagen. In 1876, George Hall became the first Major League Baseball player ever to hit for the cycle. And in 1985, Baltimore's own Earl Weaver came back, returned to manage, taking over for Joe Antabelli, who had replaced him and would stay with the Orioles for a couple more seasons. And they said, Earl, why did you do it? He said, green fees for the rest of my life. There you go. <laughs> There's always an answer. Runner on at second base, and the pitch is strike. Volkswagen Springtoberfest event going on now. Visit VWDealer.com today. Glacius lined out his first time up. Runner at second, and one out. Tillman has thrown 10 out of 16 first pitch strikes in the game. Bunting for a base hit. He had Manny Machado back. Barehanded throw. Nope. A real good buy by Iglesias, and he'll get the infield single. Yeah, he looked like he was going to try to bunt the first time, ended up lining up, and, and he can run. I mean, Manny plays it well, quickly. He's back, though, and so they're looking for base runners, and you could see he's well across the bag. And a 15 game hit streak now. For Iglesias, boy, it's getting hard to keep him out of the lineup. Not that you want to particularly, but John Farrell has a tough time with that short third situation as to who plays and who doesn't. So now first and third with one away. Four hits for the Orioles. The Red Sox putting up just their second hit. Their base runners have come via the walk. Victorino had a single in the first inning, and the single by Iglesias just their second. Even though they have stranded four in the ball game, Middlebrooks fly down his first time up. He is 0 for 4 off Tillman. And he'd like to do that again. Get a run in. Stay off the ground. Inside stayed in. 2 and 0. Yeah, this is a night where Chris Tillman does not, to this point, have his command. And that bunt goes down as a base hit with a runner in scoring position. It just doesn't get the runner in. It gets him to third. I'm going to leave that up to Middlebrooks. 2 0 count. And he will take the pitch for a strike two and one. Red Sox with the one for seven with runners in scoring position last night. Amazingly, leaving only four on base through. 13 innings part of that because of the fact the Orioles didn't walk anybody two ball one strike count Tillman will deliver and outside and he falls behind three and one so edging closer to his pitching coach <laughs> kind of sliding down the bench Throw over. Remember the Orioles 
last night. Mattis, Hunter, O'Day, Patton, McFarland all pitched in the ball game. Hunter, you'd believe, is not available. Two and a third. Inning and a third for both O'Day and Brian Mattis. You'd like to keep them out. McFarland worked an inning. Patton, two thirds of an inning could work. So Pedro Strope did not pitch. And has been struggling, so. 3 1 delivery shattered the bat. Fly ball, shallow right, runner not tagging. Arkegas makes the catch and a big out on Middlebrooks. Carp at third base was trying to watch both the bat and the ball at the same time. The uh, barrel went right by him at third. We'll take a look right here. Three and one, good fastball hitter, but the deception. I mean, this guy lives to hit the fastball. We saw him last year on his way to. What in 75 games, 15 home runs, and he just saws them off. And when he does that, ball can't go far enough for them to send the runner. And, uh, big time hitters count at three and one. Brian Butterfield really had to help Carp that time, the third base coach, because Carp didn't know where the ball was. He was watching the barrel of the bat, and Butterfield was hollering to him as to where it was and telling him it wasn't deep enough to go. So two down, still first and third. Here's Ross. David Ross flied out and will take the pitch inside for a ball. The Red Sox overall in the year, right with the Orioles, runner in scoring position number as a team, hitting at 280, their fifth, the Orioles 282, or fourth. So they've had pretty good numbers, but of late, they've had trouble getting people in. Yeah, well, check out David Ross at one for 12. 1 0 delivery on the way, and a really good. No bad bad track, yeah. and a good pitch. Well, take a look at your Nissan pitch track, and uh, you know, a lot of times you do it on purpose, and you just see kind of fluctuating velocity from Chris Tillman. And there's no way the way his command is tonight, you can look for one area of the, of the plate. He, he's thrown some down and away, up and in, up and away, all over the place. It's so deceptively wild. Line one delivery to Ross. Tillman gets ahead on the count of ball and two strikes. Red Sox getting a leadoff walk to Carp. He got moved up by Iglesias with a bunch single with one away. Now two down. First inning. Red Sox left 2 1. This is the first base runner. They've had the third base in the game. Nick Lacey is in the minors league uh, you know, 12 stolen bases a year so it could run a little bit but the one thing when you look at the numbers what 52 percent for Matt Weiders it's just they don't run because of his ability to throw people out. So if this Lacey is going to run he better make it because you'll be right out of the inning with the way Weiders throws. Here's the one two delivery runner not going and it wouldn't have mattered. Tillman gets his first strikeout right when he needed it. No runs, one hit, no errors, two. Left on base, the Orioles lead.
set on Military Appreciation Night here at the ballpark. Another real fine start. Davis, Major League leading 22nd home run. Put the Orioles on the board. A little Oriole magic right there. Hunter and O'Day. The 12th coming across the plate. And the second Oriole run. And the Orioles under the red, white, and blue have a 2 0 lead here at Camden Yards. Jones, by the way, getting that second RBI. And there's Chris who had the home run. Brian Dempster on the mound to flick of love. And Weeders puts it up in the air to right field down the line. It is deep and it is a foul ball. That was a monster shot up in the air right by the foul pole. Yeah, he gets all over this high fastball. And Matt has a tendency he can do that. Now the leadoff batter almost getting a home yeah. run. It didn't miss by very much. Matt with the one for six lifetime off Ryan Dempster. Leaders Hardy and Dickerson are due up. And will miss inside. Uh, keep inside the numbers and uh, this 54 hits this year. 33 on fastballs. Tried to make it 34. Nine with the breaking balls and then 12 on changeups. And of course he is a switch hitter so. Nice little slider. Haven't seen too many of those tonight. One of the two balls have been hit hard all night. He's trailing two to nothing. One a home run and one a double. Ground ball right back to him. Makes the play over the cart. Leaders retired. The Orioles are proud to celebrate Flag Day and the Army's birthday by wearing special jerseys and caps featuring the camouflage pattern. After the game, the jerseys will be autographed by the player or coach wearing it, authenticated, and made available for auction at Orioles.com slash auction. Proceeds are going to benefit the Fort Meade Alliance Resiliency Center Fund. So place your bids. Visit Orioles.com slash auction. We talk about the authentication. Major League Baseball has become a very uh, protective of that. There were so many autographed items out there signed by clubbies and other people. But Major League Baseball now has a whole system and a, and a group of people who travel around authenticating autographs in situations like this. So yeah. you know what you get. Yeah, I remember when Don Mattingly was playing for the Yanks. Where it is going, boy, can you get a Mattingly ball? And they said, you mean a real one? Or... For one for one, by the yeah. Club, yeah. No, we had Neil Cashin was one of our, uh, our our bat boy. He could he could do the whole ball. Whole ball. Wow. Every other Frank Cashin's nephew, who was really? young, you know Frank. Well, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Do the whole wow. ball. I could do Louis Aparicio. And the reason I could do Louis is when I broke in in 1975, the, the league maximum was seven thousand dollars. Louis made seventy two thousand dollars tax free. Venezuela and I used to imagine that so I used to <laughs> practice <laughs> just writing Louis Luis Aparicio just and Hardy takes us to boy if I could ever make two seventy two thousand dollars I mean yeah how did you think you were going to do that by autographing well I just wanted to be Louis <laughs> oh uh, I just wanted his bank account <laughs> don't go any further on advice of counsel yeah, right. pitches up yeah. high and Hardy gets the walk that's the second walk surrendered by Dempster. Mid Atlantic Sports Report continues on Monday. Tom Davis, Dave Johnson, Mel Anton, and Phil Wood. They'll recap this big weekend against the Red Sox and a preview of the upcoming road trip where the Orioles are headed to Detroit and then on to Toronto. That's the Mid Atlantic Sports Report, Monday, 5 to 6 30. One on, one down. Chris Dickerson up. Dickerson, a strikeout victim, his first time up. Dempster, two walks and a strikeout. Tillman, four walks and one strikeout. Yeah, for Ryan Dempster, the, the walks up a little. Gets away, and that'll be a wild pitch. I was going to say the walks up a uh, little more than he would like this year. And I think the reason, and we'll take a look right here, the little breaking ball, a splitter that goes down and just bounces. David Ross can't keep it in front of him. But when you become a veteran pitcher and your velocity drops, sometimes when you get behind a hitter like J.J. Hardy, you, you, you know he, he has powers. You pitched against him in the National League. You've done your, your homework. You pitch around him a little bit, or you try to make the perfect pitch, and 
He almost has a, a, a walk every two innings, which is high for him. 1 0 delivery on the way. Dickerson will take it for a strike. That is the fifth wild pitch thrown by Dempster this year. So the Orioles get a runner in the scoring position with only one away. Hardy, the walk in the wild pitch at second base. Dickerson, one for one in the ballgame last night. He has a couple of hits and five at bats against the Red Sox on the year, and he'll let that pitch go by. And the count goes to two and one. Well, you mentioned he had never pitched here at Camden Yards, but this is the first time in his first three starts against the Orioles. Never gave up more than a run. So to get two runs off Ryan Dempsey, you're having a good night. You want to get more, though. He has walked as many as six in a ball game and four in two other games. 2 1 delivery on the way, and that's going to miss inside. Three and one. So there we go. The Ack who's next door. Those are one or few runners. Then Todd Stottlemyre, you know, the son of uh, Mel Stottlemyre. Dallas Braden. Steve Comer. I thought he was an outfielder. 3 1 delivery on the way and did not get a good cut on that one. There was a Steve Comer because Steve Comer was playing center field the night that Boot Powell at the old ballpark, Six Stadium, hit a inside the park home run. You do not forget that night. And I saw Boog today. He looked great. Things I did. I saw him outside yeah, today. He was everywhere as always. Had the Boog's barbecue shirt on. Mm -hmm. Three ball, two strike, Gob Dickerson, runner off second base, and fooled on the pitch. And he did not get a good cut on the last two. Well, expecting maybe uh, the local and got the express. Soft and softer, and then zipped it right away. Probably a little bit off the outside corner, but. Brian Dempster with two strikeouts in the game. Runner at second, two down. And that will bring up Ryan Flaherty. So it's uh, actually I had uh, the last name was Comer. It was Wayne Comer who was playing center field that night. Had gone to the uh, who were they? The, uh, what? the Seattle whatever they were. Pilots. Yeah, the Pilots. Yeah, he would been an expansion player. Two down, and Flaherty shows bunt. No, 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 almost, no, no, no. almost. Hardy had a big jump at second base, and trying to get him behind him was Inglacius. Well, it's two outs. We want, we want a base hit. It'd be different if you bunted a lot. The Orioles one for six with runners in scoring position in the ball game. Ryan Flaherty, Hardy on at second, two nothing. Orioles lead. Orioles out hitting the Red Sox four two. And the pitch will miss one ball and one strike. Well, we saw Jim Preston, the Oriole hitting instructor, on Tuesday out with Chris Davis, and he would stand down the third baseline and he would do the the soft toss, trying to feel like if you're left-handed, Chris being a left-handed hitter, you, the shoulder stays in. Today it was Ryan Flaherty's turn to do that and to stay closed, use the whole field. Did hit a double last night to left. Right one away. ball, yeah, one strike, a little bit longer. Time. That'll go to first base. Carp is there. The flip made. Dempster gets over to cover. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. Orioles still lead it.
The one-run ball game last night, Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer back. Jim, maybe a comment. Kevin Gossman got sent down. Buck Showalter said, look, I didn't make any promises to him. He could be there all year at AAA where he's never pitched, or he could be back here next week. It's up to him. Right, and uh, Miguel Gonzalez, his wife, uh, Lucia, is, is pregnant, expecting on the 19th. So you get the bereavement, you, you never know. I, I thought he pitched well enough last night. He made some adjustments. You know, he's got three pitches, but his best two are fastball and changeup. Matt Wieters and uh, Kevin did a great job. Uh, the Red Sox, number one offense, only two runs for six innings. So, for five and what, five and two thirds. So, he gave him a chance to win. And, uh, you know, tonight we're seeing exactly the same. You know, yep. Dempster's on a two win game winning streak. Tillman's won his last three. And the score is two to nothing. And Jake Arrieta gets another chance. He's back up to work out of the bullpen. They want him to succeed. He just has to figure out how he can do it. And maybe, maybe being in the bullpen where you don't have to think. We saw what happened with, with, with Brian Mattis. Uh, I mean, think about every five days where you can just warm up and come into the game. You have some of the best stuff. There's not a, a guy that I've ever met, scout or whatever, baseball person that says, what's going on with him? I mean, he's got too good of stuff not to have some success. So we'll see how this plays out. But as you saw, he is out there in the uh, bullpen for tonight. Red Sox batting with Jacoby Ellsbury at the top of the order. Ellsbury has gone 0 for 2 and 0 for 7 in the first two games of this series, and he will take that for a strike. Tillman, 2 0 lead. Davis a home run. Jones a single. Red Sox have had at least one runner on in each inning. They have already stranded six, two in scoring position. Orioles have had a runner on in every inning. 1 2 delivery, and that'll be up high. The Red Sox have not been able to take advantage of getting two leadoff walks, one in the second, one in the fourth. Those runners both obviously ended up stranded. Well, what it's done, though, is the pitch count at 75, which is higher than you want. And, well, he's a walking double. He, if he gets on with 30 steals, he did get thrown out night last night once with the steal of base. And what has he got? Uh, nine stolen bases six straight games that Ellsbury has been able to steal a base nine of them in those six games 2 2 delivery to him Ellsbury is going to go down swinging two strikeouts for Tillman well that's good news because there's the sky hook yeah. and this is a pitch early on a year 45 percent of the time look at your Nissan pitch trap try to track that I mean you could have a pathfinder you could have four wheel drive you couldn't hit that curveball so Tillman gets the first out in the fifth inning. Victorino a single and a walk. Eight game hit streak for him and a couple of hits in this series as he is 2 4 7. 32 year old out of Hawaii and he will take the pitch. Victorino, a staple part of some good days in Philadelphia when they were winning. He played there from 2005 through last season, went to the Dodgers for part of the season and now. Here with the Red Sox and a one ball one strike count a very solid 275 career major league batting average John Farrell's got him out there in right field one one delivery and that'll be in the air to center Jones on Thursday June 27 the first 10,000 fans 15 and over at the Orioles 705 game with the Indians will receive the Birdland Beach Towel presented by Visit Sarasota County. Show your colors at the beach at the pool and all summer long with a great fun beach towel. It's yours. 888-848-BIRD or Orioles.com June 27 game against the Indians. Dustin Pedroia with two down and nobody on outside for a ball. Pedroia has fly out popped out one for seven in the two games. 323 lifetime hitter against the Orioles. Five for 16 off Tillman. 1 0 delivery to him. That is outside. The epitome of a conscience of a team, Dustin Pedroia. Want to know how well you're playing, how hard you're trying? <laughs> Measure yourself by Dustin Pedroia. Here's the 2 0 pitch and a strike on the outside corner from Tillman. Yeah, he changed his arm angle and I think it changed him. And that's, uh, that's uh, it. when does he ever take a 93 mile per hour fastball, even though he threw it well right down the middle? He usually leaves Earth. But every once in a while, the arm will just drop a little bit. He does on the cutter like that. That's 88, five miles. 
But you have a 2 nothing lead and you look on deck. And, and how can you miss the shadow of David Ortiz? So you, you have to make Pedroia put the ball in play. He dies to short. Hardy is there. And the out recorded. So Tillman has a clean inning. The first of the ball game. Nine fly ball outs. Four on the ground and two Ks. And is brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. It's always fresh in the Outback. And by Ocean City, Maryland. Book your Ocean City, Maryland vacation at OCOcean.com. Big crowd on hand here uh, tonight, close to a sellout. And folks enjoying a beautiful evening and a great baseball game again. Orioles with the 2 0 lead as we go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Brian Flaherty. Uh, last out, Nate McLeod leading it off here. McLeod the walk scored. He has flied out. The Orioles get the top of the order up here with Machado and Marquegas to follow. Hitting at 284 now on the year. And the pitch outside to him for a ball, 2 and 0. Now 41 runs now scored for Nate McLeod, and he doesn't play every day. In the order against the right handers leading off. Okay, it takes that spot against the left handers. And he makes pitchers work as he gets this count to three and oh. Nate, one of the hardest to strike out in the league. 3 0 delivery to him, taken all the way, and that was four straight. And he is on a leadoff walk. That is the third walk surrendered by Dempster. Time for the fifth inning home run bonus. This inning only tonight's Maryland Lottery hit a big contestant of the game. We'll get $500 for any Orioles home run. Michael Long has already won $900 tonight. For your chance to be the Maryland Lottery hit a big contestant of the game, play five card cash. Go to mdlottery.com to enter. Let's see if the Orioles can take advantage of the leadoff walk. Now you get more no, normal 20 year old guys and we talked about the fact that his last home run was the 5th of uh, May but he hits the ball and we saw it Dab double down the line single into right he can move the runners ideal second place hitter not not afraid to hit deep in the count how many kids at 20 they're so anxious they're swinging at pitches and whatever but not many so if you're going to let McLeod run. And you know Dempster and Ross, who's a good throwing catcher, are certainly aware of that. He doesn't mind maybe taking a pitch or two. Machado with nobody out waiting. And a strike in the outside corner. Doesn't walk a lot. 14 walks. 42 strikeouts. He puts the ball in play. Man, he's had, uh, along with those major league leading 29 doubles, two triples, and five home runs. Has consistently had one of the better numbers against right handers. His average against right handers is fourth best in the American League. And that's what you see a lot of. 0 1 count. 
A cloth off first base leaning, not going. Machado will take it away for a ball. Well, I'm looking down here and I'm looking at Manny's back foot. I, I remember Tommy Davis played for us for a while, one of the great hitters when coming up with the Dodgers until he broke his ankle and he could still you know, nice DH and whatever, but the he hit second the year that Maury Wills stole 100 bases and he said, I move deeper in the box. Because then what does the catcher have to do? We saw catcher's interference last night. He's got to sit farther away from second base. And you can see Dempster, he's hold the ball, he's going to slide step, he's going to do everything, he's going to throw over. The last thing he wanted to do was walk Nate McClough coming into the third time through the heart of the order. Red Sox have given up a lot of stolen bases, 50 stolen bases against them. You compare that to the Orioles who have given up 17. One ball, one strike count, runner not going off the end of the bat and back foul. See, so Machado, one and two. And that was Dempster just. Almost blocked, barely stopped. And the Dempster also, he actually just pretty much the same pitch count per inning as Chris Tillman. Almost 18 in an inning over the course of their first 13 starts. Ross sets up outside. Chata will take that. He can go to right. And he did. It's a foul ball. Big hole between first and the second with Carp holding the bag. And Manny Machado got behind on that last at bat. Two strikes on him. And he took a ball that was away, maybe even out of the strike zone, and drove it by Carp, who was holding the bag, into right field. There was nothing more annoying. Whether you're 20 or you're 30 or you're 40, if you hit a good pitch, and that's what he did. First one was just a fastball in the middle of the plate. That's the one he doubled on. The other one was a pitcher's pitch. And come in on him now. One ball, two strike count, runner not going, and the pitch will be up high. Something a little bit off speed there. I'm not sure. It almost looked like a knuckleball delivery. As he discus that one up there, two and two. Yeah, I think what happened is a lot of times when you're not a power pitcher and you you're used to pitching down, but you want to pitch up, you really stay under it. So he, it's almost like he threw the ball uphill. Like and shot sure, yeah, yeah, that he, and that's why it looked like he he was so far under it. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out. McClough not going, and he got him on a pitch away. Foul tipped into the mitt. Well, Manny can't believe it's not that pitch because this is a perfect slider. Watch this. Watch this slider. He stays behind it and pulls right at the end. So it looks like a fastball till just then. And it just slides away. That's why a good slider has that type spin. And that was about as well as you can throw it. Was well, foul tipped. Ross held on to it for the first out. And that will bring up Nick Marquegas. Nick has grounded out, flyed out. One hit, eight at bats in the first two games at 288 on the year for Marquegas. McLeod at first with Jones on deck. Middlebrooks moving in at third pitch out. They had it. Can they get him? Nope. McLeod goes over the bag and uh, Glacius tried to deke him by running out towards center like he didn't have the ball. McLeod's got a stolen base. Well, you could see when you slide the uh, feet first. And what happens? I mean, he gets a great jump, and Ross can throw 42 percent. So sometimes you'll slide right by the bag, and he hits the top of the of the bag with his spikes and just keeps going. This is how that 19-game streak ended the other day, with Ibar applying the tag as he came into the bag. So he hits it and just kind of slides through it, and can tell you how fast you're going and how quickly he can start and stop, or at least try to stop. You saw Iglesias start running out the center like the ball had gotten by him. Marquegas down to first. That's a fair ball. Carp will play it to the bag. And there are two away with a runner at third base. In our Major League Notebook under East Winds, the Eastern Division, the Blue Jays have won six of the past nine. Five of them decided by one or two runs. They're playing a lot of close ball games. Tampa Bay Rays staff wouldn't have believed that they'd be doing this. They've allowed double-digit runs seven times this year, one shy of the total times. That happened from 2011 to 2012 seasons combined. And to Shara Hafner, Euclid, and Wells in that long ball game last night, 0 for 28 for the Yankees in that loss at Oakland in the extra inning affair. Yeah, how about the Yanks scoring two in the first and then never scoring for the next 17? 
Yeah, tells you a little bit about Oak Gardner right now yeah. in the lineup. But you also get the impression what the uh, I saw some number about the you know, the A's have won 101 out of their last 160 some games at home. And then one of the best teams in baseball last year with 94 wins. And they've gotten it going again. Pitch will be taken inside by Jones RBI single. It came with two down in the third inning. One for two in the ball game, and here he is again with a chance. Orioles one for eight with runners in scoring position. They've stranded four. McClouth is over there at third base. Here's the one one delivery, and Adam puts it up in the air to center. Ellsbury. He's got it, and that will end the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a base runner left on. The Orioles on top, 2 0. Head and the shoulders. Chris Tillman, the Orioles starter in this ball game, picking up a couple of strikeouts so far, and uh, the important ones, especially in the fourth inning when he got Ross. Dempster on the other side has had three strikeouts in the ball game. Two fly ball pitchers getting their fly ball out so far in the ball game, along with those strikeouts. Yeah, Chris Tillman, that. Uh... That first strikeout at 94, hardest fastball he's thrown, threw it right by David Ross. So it doesn't get easier with a big guy, big poppy. Leading it off here in the sixth. A walk and a fly ball out for David Ortiz. Ortiz, lifetime against the Orioles now, 261 with 35 career home runs. And he will take the pitch for a ball. Leading off the sixth inning. Orioles runs holding up one in the second, one in the third for the 2 0 lead. Hmm. That's in there. Yeah, and boy, is that a good curveball. Feel, it's a feel pitch. Boy, you come out of the bullpen, you have a good one, then you wonder where it went. And then you hope it'll you'll find it. Down low to it. Ortiz here at Camden Yards has hit 248 in his career. He's had over well, almost 340 at bats here in this ballpark. He's got 16 home runs. And the thought about it, did he go? Nope. Jim Joyce. Three ball, one strike count on Ortiz. Yeah, it didn't appear to swing. Not even close. Big and strong. 3 1 delivery by Tillman, and he got it up in the air. Right field. Well, this is we've seen the emergence, Gary, of Chris Tillman really feeling comfortable with that changeup. The last two games, curveballs and changeups. You wondered why he threw so many home runs, 16 coming in, leading the American League. Because that probably would have been a fastball, and Ortiz would have left Earth. He got fooled on the changeup, three and one count. First out recorded here in the sixth inning. Only two leadoff batters have been on both via one via the walk in the fourth inning, one the walk 
in the second. Here's Mike Carp. And Carp will take it up high for a ball. Carp reached on the walk in the fourth, and he has flied out. Carp now with a, a hit in four at bats, the home run in the ball game last night here in this series. Carp will take the pitch away. Tillman continues to fall behind hitters, but has been able to come back and find a way to get the outs. Well, his command's not good, but the stuff has been pretty good. And the, and the pitch count now at 92, so you're looking maybe this inning and there's a strike and maybe another one. Only 10 for 23 in first pitch strikes in the ball game, less than half. Two ball, one strike count. That's the extent of my math, by the way. <laughs> and a strike taken, uh, called at the letters, which Carp was not particularly happy about two and two. Well, uh, Corey Blazers had a high strike zone all night long. The low one, don't think about it. And nicely brought back into the strike zone, very subtly by Matt Wieters. And the delivery will miss away. Carp getting a lot of chances here this year with the bat working. He's been in 38 of the 57 games. Last year he had a little playing time here, two of the first 12. That ball put up in the air. Jones is back. He's got it. What Jim was talking about in our notebook on the page streaks. The A's have won uh, 11 consecutive games at home and 108 of the last 168 home games. An amazing home record. The Yankees have contributed to that by losing seven straight games in Oakland. In the National League, Adam Wainwright, St. Louis, seven innings or more, no home runs in 11 of his 14 starts this season. Those 11 are the most in the majors. Got 10 wins. First pitcher to reach 10. Yeah, I think Matt Scherzer is going to get a Monday night. He's 9 and 0. But that'll change. Maybe. 0 oh, 1 count. Tillman's delivery. And it's taken down low. Two down, nobody on. Navo walk, and he's grounded out. Yeah, you don't know what Tillman's going to throw tonight. <laughs> He'll throw change up. Not that he's commanding him. He just he throws him. Uh, He'll be high with his fastball. He'll come back. He, the, now the ground ball was on a three and one change up. So he has uh, told the Red Sox by his actions. Yeah, I might have not have my best command, but I am totally unpredictable. <laughs> so watch this. <laughs> yes. Well, right. Two one delivery on the way. and That'll be a pie. Three ball one strike count. He's pitching a two hit shutout. He's got a 2 0 lead in the ball game in the first outing against the Red Sox. He gave up two runs on six hits and five and a third. Six hits were singles. In this ball game, the two hits are singles. 3 1 delivery, and that's fouled 3 and 2. I mean, Daniel Nava is probably, that's what his fourth air it out swing on high fastballing just can't quite get to it. You bring it down about three or four inches, might be a little different. 102nd pitch of the ball game coming for Tillman. Three ball, two strike count on Nava. And he got him. Three strikeouts. And another one, two, three inning. That's eight in a row retired by Tillman. Hi, I'm Nate McLeod with the Baltimore Orioles, and I just want to say thank you to all past and current members of the United States military for protecting and defending our country.
Getting it done, protecting that 2 nothing lead, just two hits. Let's take a look at our Alexis Towson drive of the game as you look at Chris Davis. All right, we got the uh, hard double by Machado early on, and then the 22nd. Okay. Fly ball, that's what he hits. I mean, pretty, got out of here in a hurry. And that's, there's your Lexus uh, drive of the game. He makes it 2 nothing. And batting again here, our drive of the game brought to you by Lexus of Towson, Baltimore's number one Lexus dealer. See why at LexusofTowson.com. Yes, if you're a Ryan Dempster, you, you would like to have two outs and then you could just kind of either make your pitcher. But leading off an inning is tough. That ball will be fouled outside of first. The pitcher who gives up lead off homers and the batter who hits them. That's what it was in the second, and that's the way it's been for both Dempster and Davis this season. One ball, one strike out. Bottom half of the sixth inning. The Orioles trying to take their second from John Farrell's ball club. The Orioles have won 12 of the last 16 played against the Red Sox. 1 1 delivery, and he was going for another. Swings through it, one and two. And remember, the uh, one of the keys to the game was uh, mixed uh, support for Ryan Dempster when he wins in his four wins. They got him 33 runs when he loses. They got him seven runs in his six losses. But he can't do much about that. All he can do is try to keep the Orioles from scoring. And there's it's a perfect, a, yeah, perfect breaking ball. That's four strikeouts recorded by Dempster. Well, Average is one an inning. A little bit of more than one inning. And this one and two. Look at where Ross slides. Maybe Ross is a big guy that moves well. And he just throws him a little slider. You think it's going to be a strike. Bottom falls out. Leaders an 0 for 2 in the game. Matt will take that to second base where Dustin Pedroia resides. Two down. Orioles June 30 game against the Yankees is now an 8.05 start to accommodate ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Get your tickets, show Birdland Pride and paint the park orange. Get your tickets in advance at 888 bird to go to Orioles.com. That's June 30 is now a Sunday night game. Two down, nobody on. That'll bring up Hardy, who has walked and grounded out. And J.J. takes the pitch for a strike. Uh, Dempster moving along here with the four hits surrendered. But enough for the Orioles to have that 2 nothing lead. And otherwise, it's been about the pitchers. Yeah, he can uh, pitch, as is Chris Tillman. Dempster looks like... Even though he's given up the two runs, certainly in command of his stuff, has a great idea of what he wants to try to do. 1-1 one, one delivery, a ground ball to third base, and Middlebrooks has got it. He'll make the play to first. That will retire the side. That's going to be six in a row retired by Dempster. Tillman's coming back out. Davis first run for the Orioles 22nd home run of the year left center and 
the second inning and then in the third inning Adam Jones with two outs McLeod who had walked with one out ends up scoring on the two out infield hit and then 94 gets uh, Ross as Tillman gets out of problems and uh, Nava goes down on a high fastball. Well both of these pitchers pitching very well Dempster and walk as many struck out more a little more efficient but uh, he's the one so far that's given up the runs two of them tonight. And Chris Tillman ready to work here bottom third of the order Iglesias. Will take the pitch for a strike. And Geico saving people money on more than just car insurance. Iglesias in the ball game with the base hit his last time up he's one for two 15 game hit streak for him. And a strike taken. Darren O'Day in the bullpen for the Orioles. During the streak Iglesias has had 23 hits 52. At bats. 0 2 delivery to him will be fouled away, as we said, sharing a time with Stephen Drew at short, a veteran player, Drew, also has come in to play at third base, trying to give Middlebrooks a, a bit of a rest and keep Inglacius' bat in. He's back at short tonight. That's the first, that'll be a base hit down the line. Going over to get it, Nick Marcakis. Iglesias will go into second base in a hurry with a leadoff double. Yeah, it's just unbelievable. Not a great 0 2 pitch because he, it was a, not a horrible one, but it's a, you, know, you could bounce it, you could throw it in. But when you're as hot as he is, closing in on 500 in the month of June, you're able to hit that pitch. And it sets up the inning. So Tillman now with the leadoff man on again this time at second base third time out of seven innings leadoff man's been on a buck show waters coming. Strange ball game uh, when you look at the numbers. The buck show Walter just feels this is one of those gut feels that Tillman's been off tonight but been able to come back and get things done. And he's just worried he's not going to be able to do it again. Yeah I think he's looking at the uh, pitch count at uh, 106 but. Yeah, it's maybe not his best command, but he certainly can battle you with the best of them. For again, and Tillman's got a chance to get his seventh victory of the year. So our scouting report, well, winning uh, six wins, uh, could win tonight. So certainly puts him in a position. Uh, 16 home runs and 13 starts. Didn't throw any tonight. No June swing, but soon because he's been pitching so well. So once again, he gives him a chance to win uh, the bullpen last night. What six and a third innings of scoreless baseball? They'd certainly like to see that Darren Day with an inning and a third of it. Big strikeout of Shane Victorino. With the potential uh, go ahead run. So uh, there are the numbers. Doesn't walk hardly anybody. More than a strikeout uh, per inning for Darren. Lefties hit him better than righties. Look at that number by right handers. 111. And been able to, against both of them, keep the ball in the ballpark. 
So Darren O'Day comes on with a runner at second base. Nobody out. Seventh inning. Middlebrooks up. Middlebrooks has flied out twice. Middlebrooks 0-4-4. Lifetime against O'Day. As the Red Sox will try and make a run here in the seventh inning. And first ball hitting down the line and right. Nick Marquez, a long run, was playing the other way. Whoa. And right off the wall. Both the ball and Nick. We talked about the foul balls Tillman picks up in games. He had 19 foul balls of the 106 pitches thrown. Came in with the third most foul balls by batters. And while the uh, the runner at second is significant because it's a run, you have a two run lead, and the guy at the plate is your tying run. O'Day's given up nothing against the Red Sox this year. This is his fourth game. He's worked three and a third innings and struck out four. Middlebrooks, the 0 1 delivery to him. One ball, one strike count. He would love to hit something to the right side. And of course, what Darren O'Day does so well, that 111 batting average against righties, he throws that, that front hip breaking ball. And it's hard to hit it to right field. The Red Sox just have to get on the board some way. One ball, one strike count. And that's a broken bat bloop that'll go to second. Flaherty's there. One down. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Gary Thorne and Jim Palmer with you for game two. We'll be right back here tomorrow. Remember, it is a four o'clock ball game tomorrow as Freddie Garcia goes against John Lackey. Goes extra on at 3.30. David Ross. Ross, uh, an 0 for 2. He has struck out, flied out. One down with a runner at second. And a swing and a miss and a pitch. He had no chance on as it broke away. Yeah, I think the, the change of speeds, the movement, the deception, of, or you can count on a couple of fingers who throws from this arm angle. Bends at the waist. That sets up the spine angle. And a lot of times righties they give up on him. O'Day gets ahead on the count 0 and 2 on Ross. Tillman watching. Responsible for that base runner and Glacius out there at second base. Delivery to Ross and a swing and a foul tip. Well, just imagine you're a backup catcher. Jared Saltam Lamakia does uh, most of the catching. So you never see anybody thrown from this arm angle or this kind of breaking ball. Mm -hmm. Does a nice job. It's certainly an off balance swing. An emergency hack of the of the foremost. Only his 23rd game. He's only uh, just surpassed 60 RBIs. You saw Salta Lamakia there, the regular catcher. 0 2 count. Runner off second. And Ross stays away. O'Day says he went after one. Let's go a little further out there. Well, he's has David Ross has a history of uh, hitting home run. I mean, he's a powerful guy. Brian McCann, the regular catcher, went healthy down with Atlanta. So he's always, in the last couple of years, he's backed him up. Said three home runs against the Orioles. Lifetime. Iglesias off second base. One ball, two strike count. Flaherty holding the runner. Backs off. And O'Day will step off. Iglesias was really jumping around out there at second base. Plus he's getting a huge, huge lead. Now Ryan Flaherty at second base will. You can see him in the right hand part of your picture. He's going to come in to just cut the lead down a little bit. Not to pick him off. Not to be out of position. But you don't want him stealing third base here. And trying to give the outfield a chance on a base hit. So Flaherty over near the bag and then jumps away to get back to his position. One ball, two strike count. And another sweeping pitch that'll miss outside. And it'll go to two and two. So back to another crunch time game. We're in the seventh inning and 
Orioles have made the run stand up in the second and third. They got one each. John Farrell's team's not been able to do anything against Tillman. But Show Walters Ball Club playing tight games. They've all been that way. Last night, 5 4, 13 innings. The Orioles coming away with the victory after winning the games in Boston. Two out of three, and he gets it. Roday gets a strikeout, two down. Well, it's a game of matchups. So you bring in your right handed specialist, and he throws. A, they're only hitting 111 off him. You have a guy that doesn't play a lot. One for 13 with runners in scoring position, and the odds are in favor of Darren O'Day, and he gets the job done. So two down, and the top of the order, Jacoby Ellsbury, looking for his first hit in the series. 0 for 3 in the game, 0 for 8 in the first two. He's had a couple of hits, six at bats off O'Day, including a home run. Iglesias with the leadoff double still out there at second. And that ball punched in the air. Center field. Jones has it lined up. He'll get there. No runs, one hit, no errors. One left on. Seventh inning stretch time. Chris Tillman a chance to be the winner. O'Day gets the outs here and protects the lead. Our coverage on Mass and HD begins at 3.30 with those extra presented by Geico, followed by our game coverage at 4 on Mass and HD and WJC. All the access you need right here on Mass. So, Freddie Garcia, the master of uh, the splitter, and John Lackey back. Um, actually pitching pretty well. Look at the low ERA. Bicep tendonitis, so he's back on the mound. Two pretty well, especially uh, Freddie Garcia, veteran right-handers that know how to pitch, and they'll be pitching in the twilight. 405. <laughs> pitching coaches love it. Pitchers love it. Hitting instructors, hitters, not so much. Well, we have a moment. Uh, congratulate Major League Baseball as they take another move in the global effort. As they're going to be playing in Sydney, Australia next year. It'll be the Dodgers against Arizona. Dodgers president and CEO Stan Kasten said, Our organization is committed to growing the game of baseball internationally. I'm eager to kick off our season in one of the most exciting and rapidly developing baseball markets on earth. And he is right about that. So the, or, the uh, Major League Baseball will start the 2014 season with two games between the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks. Regular season games, March 22 and 23, going to be played at the Sydney Cricket Grounds in Australia. Going to go on a week, and I'm going to try and do those games. I am uh, bending the arms of everybody at Major League Baseball, telling them that the international broadcast should be there for that groundbreaking moment in Australia and Sydney. We should be covering those games. World will want to know what's going on there. And uh, I think we should broadcast those oh, on International definitely. League Baseball. So there. 
So there you have Besides it. Besides the fact I love well, Sydney. Yeah, I mean, I've never been there. and uh, But I think what Craig Shipley, one of the Australian players, I think he actually still works for the Dutch. Yes. Or maybe the Diamondbacks, one of the two teams. So, I, I, But I thought he was maybe farm director or something like that with the Dodgers. So maybe that's one of the connections. Why not? It's great. Southern Hemisphere? Is it Southern Hemisphere? It's a beautiful city, yes. Gorgeous so, place. So yeah. the North, the uh, Coriolosso effect. Our left handers have an advantage. Won't be they won't, the, the right handers. Right handers are going to want to start. Corey Alonso, yeah, uh, Clayton, flush Kershaw. the toilet, see what happens. Exactly, <laughs> Clayton Kershaw will not be <laughs> pitching in one of those two games, <laughs> in spite of how good he is. Uh, Chris Dickerson, Dickerson has struck out twice in the game. The Orioles DH, Flaherty, and then McClouth to follow. One ball, one strike count. Ryan Dempster's gone the distance for the Red Sox in this game. Giving up the two runs on four hits. Red Sox have the nothing on three hits. Seven left by Boston. Five by the O's. And De La Rosa in the bullpen. Yeah, they just called him up. Came over uh, last year in that big Dodger trade where you know, the Red Sox dumped the salary and Beckett and Gonzalez and Crawford. Hard throwing righty. Well, you can see why they got Ryan Dempster. Seven times he's pitched over 200 innings, 30 starts. Yeah, he does know how to pitch. One, two delivery on the way is foul back. Alex Wilson sent down, who had a fine performance in the ball game last night by the Red Sox, is, was really impressive. No, he really, he really was, and I think they know that. I mean, he had been up earlier, and because of again uh, the fact they had to use uh, what seven. That 14 inning game on Monday, seven pitchers. And you're trying to be at uh, full strength. That's why De La Rosa back up on or in the big leagues, hard throwing righty. And that's why Gosman is down because of the 13 inning game for the Orioles. One, two delivery and a chopper to second base. Pedroia. Dickerson is retired, bottom of the seventh inning, one out. MLB.com at bats, the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and Blackberry 10. At bat delivers O's baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at bat 31826 or go to Orioles.com for details. Here is Ryan Flaherty. Flaherty will foul that one away off Dempster. And the more you watch Ryan Dempster, the more you think of Greg Maddox. The way he's pitching lefties in, and if Maddox had the changeup, Dempster has a split finger changeup. Both serve the same purpose. 128 wins, 130 losses in his career. In the air to left field, Nava. Flaherty retired, and there are two down. That's eight in a row retired by. Dempster. Well, he's doing what you're supposed to do, which is if you give up a couple of runs, slam the door and hope that the best offense in the American League is going to come to the rescue. Orioles got a Davis home run in the second inning, an RBI single by Jones in the third, and those are the Oriole runs. And the pitch will be taken by Nate McClough. McClouth has drawn two walks, scored on one of them, and has flied out. The 100th pitch of the ball game about to be thrown for Dempster, and McClouth will take it for a strike. Oriole bullpen now active. There's Tommy Hunter. Here's the 1 1 delivery on the way. And a check swing. He held up on it. Two ball, one strike count. Well, you mentioned two and a third innings for Tommy Hunter. A lot, a lot of innings. Catching up. Two down, base is empty. 2 1 delivery to McClouth. And he'll get down the line and left. Curving. Oh, nice catch made. Daniel Nava in left field. In foul territory, had it lined up all the way, and the Orioles are retired in order in nine in a row, set down by Dempster. It remains 2 0.
Army being brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Four million members, four million stories. Navy Federal Credit Union. And by DynCorp International. We serve today for a better tomorrow. 238 years ago, the U.S. Army established to defend the nation. Masson and our proud sponsors salute all of America's Army for their willingness to sacrifice and protect our country. A lot of servicemen on hand here at the ballpark tonight and seeing a great game. A couple of the highest non-coms in the Army are here, those master sergeants and sergeant majors. Saw them down on the field before the uh, ball game tonight being recognized. Shane Victorino will lead it off, and uh, for the Orioles, Tommy Hunter will come on to pitch. Yeah, seven outs last night he got for the Orioles. Glowing numbers. Now the ability to throw strikes, throw hard, a little curveball, a little cutter. He is now pitched on the uh, seventh, the ninth, the tenth, and the thirteenth. So two and a third inning, so a lot of work. And a slow roller foul. He's a when he used O'Day in the seventh inning, he's assumed the role of Pedro Strope and then Ayala to some degree, and he certainly earned it. Of course, Ayala with Atlanta, Strope struggling. So the way this ball game is being planned out, if all goes according to Hoyle, whoever that was, Hunter works the eighth, Johnson comes in in the ninth, gets the save, game over. We'll see. Trouble is, the Red Sox stand between that and your hopes. Yeah, the trouble is you need six outs. Yeah. And, uh, and somehow you have to uh, keep them from getting two or more runs. Tommy Hunter working, and Victorino, Pedroia, and Ortiz. Are the hitters against him schedule up here in the inning? Now he was throwing about, well, he got as high as 98, but his cutter was 91 or 92. Victorino one for five off him, and the pitch will be taken down low. Victorino's got a single a walk, and he is flied out to center field. The Red Sox have had one runner to third base in the ball game. That was in the fourth inning. Carp let it off with a walk. He moved up in a single with one away by Iglesias. That's the only runner. Red Sox have had to third. They've stranded one at third and one at second, two at second in the ball game. And uh, Tommy Hunter coming on now to try and keep it that way. One ball, two strike count. Hunter against the Red Sox in his fourth game this year. He has worked five previous innings against the Red Sox. He even have two runs on two hits. A couple of home runs off him by the Red Sox. He has struck out five. Well, that's when he f figured, I just can't throw 96, 97. I have to still make good pitches. Victorino will put it up in the air to shallow right field. Flaherty back. Time to text in your vote for the AT&T player of the game. Here are the candidates. Chris Tillman with a solid six-plus innings, three hits, no runs. Manny Machado, another multi-hit game, double, single in this one. And Chris Davis, yet another home run, is 22nd leading the majors, putting the uh, Orioles up in the second inning. Text in your vote, A, B, or C, 31826. Pedroia, 0 for 3 in the ballgame. Red Sox, number three hitters, had only one hit and eight at bats in these two games. And Pedroia, on the year now against the Orioles, 3 for 17. 0 1 delivery by Hunter to him. He went all around, or it was a strike anyway. 0 and 2. Well, the other thing about Tommy Hunter, the stuff's gotten better. He learned early on that even if you're throwing in the upper 90s, you can't leave in the middle of the place. Plate the two home runs, but coming in seven walks and 35 in the third inning, so he throws a lot of strikes. The draw on the 0-2 pops it up again, shallow right. Marquez this time. Two down. So his trans transition transformation from a starter to a reliever been amazing. You know, Dennis Eckersley who. Was a starter, and then when he went, got traded to Oakland. Tony Larusa put him in the bullpen, and Heck would tell you it's a lot easier to get a guy out once than it is three or four times. He went on to go to the Hall of Fame with 390 saves, 215 wins, and won over 200 games as a starter. But he could throw strikes. He would walk three one year. 
So Hunter has that type of control and stuff. Making a huge difference in a bullpen that has had some problems this year. Tommy Hunter with the 0-1 count. David Ortiz. Ortiz 7 for 22. Three home runs off Hunter. And Ortiz will take it down low. He's 0 for 2 with a walk in the game. His only hit in the series so far. A home run in the ball game last night. So he is 1 for 7. Ryan, Ryan Dempster has been yeah. outstanding. Oh, starting role. He's given them exactly what they want. Two and one. Well, they've averaged uh, both home and a road five, over five runs a game. They just don't always do it every night. And as we mentioned, over their last 12 games uh, in the month of June, it's scored 80 runs. Two one delivery on the way up high. You keep in mind the Red Sox are third in average and first in runs. That's what the Oriole pitchers, Tillman, O'Day, and Hunter. Have gone against tonight and held them down to no runs in the ball game. Orioles staff trying to up their numbers. They are 14th in ERA overall. The starters are 12th. The bullpen 11th. Ortiz to center field. Jones and that's out. Tommy Hunter comes on. It's a done. Retiring the side in order. Orioles up by two. Tributes $50 supporting the Y of Central Maryland's fit and fun program. 181 walks, $9,050. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. With Jim Palmer, I'm Gary Thorne here at Camden Yards. The Orioles trying to shut out the Red Sox, pick up the win. Ryan Dempster is coming back out to pitch as we go to bottom of the eighth inning. 127 is high, 102 tonight. Manny Machado two for three in the ball game double single and is struck out and we'll take it up high for a ball. Now you can't take it away but from the 5th of May to the 23rd of May he just had four bad starts. He ended up one and four in May with a 5.5 ERA. Another base hit probably another double Nava going to the corner. It is a two base hit. Three for four game for Machado. Well, what the league has found out, he is a great high ball hitter. And if you hang a slider, the first double was on a fastball, screamed it down into the corner, got him out with a slider. This one stays in the middle of the plate, doesn't do anything. It's like a cement mixer, just kind of churns and stays there. And he just hits it down into the corner, hooks it for a double. Leads the league with 27 multi hit games, and that is his ninth three hit ball game of the year. And the Orioles get a chance to add to their 2 0 lead. That's hit number five off Dempster, the bullpen you saw being called upon by the Red Sox now to get ready. Nick Markakis is 0 for 3 in the ball game. And the pitch will be there for a strike. 
Marquegas and then Jones do up. They're in a hurry. Koji Uehara and De La Rosa has been up before with him. Oh, won the count. Now you don't see too many people pitch Nick Marquegas in. Like uh, Tim Ryan Dempster has done tonight. And you can see. Oh, won another broken back ground ball. Pedroia will play it. Machado will move over to third base with one away. Yeah, I don't. Obviously not trying to give himself up, but did want to hit something to the right side after the leadoff double when he gets the job done. Boy, it really puts a lot of pressure with Adam Jones coming up. Not only on Dempster, but their defense. So John Farrell makes the decision. He moves the infield in. Adam Jones at RBI single, one for three in the ball game. And a runner at third base with one out. And obviously here in the bottom of the eighth inning an enormously important run if they could get it in. Adam coming into the ball game among the uh, top ten starting the day in RBIs ranked seventh. And he fouls it back into the screen. Adam right there and hits he's got 85 in the year now that's fourth most in the American League. You know, almost every other manager in baseball and John Farrell a former pitcher. Probably would go to Rui Hara because of his strikeout abilities. But apparently, a lot of trust in Ryan Dempster. And as we mentioned, over nine strikeouts per nine innings. And that's what he's hunting for. There's your numbers one for 10 for the Orioles with runners in scoring position. Oh, one delivered to Jones, kept the ball away. Goes to two strikes. Dempster has four strikeouts in the ballgame. Well, that's about as good a slider as he's thrown all night. He had retired nine in a row prior to the double by Manny Machado to lead off the inning. And the Orioles are trying to take advantage of it. And push another run across here in the eighth. Oh to the count on Jones. And up high. One ball, two strike count. Pacing time for both managers. Victory here and the Orioles can cut the Red Sox lead to a game and a half with two more games left in this four game set. One ball two strike count. That'll be outside Adam watches it go by. And they're trying to get him to uh, expand the strike zone and the more pitches you get to see if you're Adam Jones. Never easy, but less difficult. The Orioles, the only team in the East right now that have a winning record against the Red Sox, three and one, trying to make it four and one. Machado over there at third base. Two ball, two strike count on Jones. Infield stays in. And up high to him. Adam refusing to go after pitches out of the strike zone gets the full count. That's what he was talking about before the game is just trying to force him to throw him strikes. And Dempster, kind of a moment of reflection. He's probably reflecting on a low and away slider like he threw earlier in the count. And Adam saying, Can I see it? Can I pick it up? Can I put it in play? Here's the 3 2 delivery, and Jones will foul it away. And there was the slider, and he did foul it away. Real good battle here as the power hitting Adam Jones against Dempster. Well, Jim Presley, yeah. yeah. Jim Presley, the hitting instructor for the last couple of years, has preached look away, react in. Cover the outside corner, and this is one of those situations. Dempster doesn't throw over 90, so Adam's going to look away. And if he does get the ball inside, just try to react to it. And you do all those drills to be able to try to do that. You know, the one arm drills. Here's the 3 2 delivery again. Jones, a chopper, runner not going. Pedroia takes him back, gets the out. So the infield in worked as ball hit hard. The draw up and no chance for Manny Machado to leave third base. Two down.
So Jim Johnson, if it's a safe situation, TJ McFarland should it not be. Two down, and Chris Davis, the home run in the second inning, one for three in the ball game. Well, I gotta imagine you're gonna you gotta walk Chris Davis. I think they're going to. So the intentional pass will be the fourth walk overall surrendered by Dempster in the ball game. And then Pedroia moves right behind him with Machado who should be paying attention down at third in case the ball is thrown away. And this is where at the turn of the last century teams would put a player behind the catcher. And the rule was established that there can be only one defensive player in foul territory and that's the catcher. 3 0 count. And there is ball four. So the intentional pass goes to Davis. That's the eighth intentional pass he's picked up. First and third, two down. Weeders. 0 for three coming to the plate. Yeah, Matt doing a nice job this year. You know, two years ago he hit 328 with runners in scoring position. Last year it went to 259. This year, even though it's early, it's 283. So his number with runners in scoring position about 30, not what, 30, 30 some points higher than his normal average. So Matt Waiters a big chance to kind of put a nail into this ball game in the Orioles' favor. Two down, runners at first and third. Bottom half of the eighth inning, Ryan Dempster talking to Carp at first base as to where they want him to play. They will move him off the bag, but holding the bag. With Weeders, a left hander up, trying to give him a little room if a ground ball comes that way. And Weeders will take it outside for a ball. 118 pitches thrown in the ball game by Ryan Dempster in his 14th start. Team has won six, lost seven. Dempster's first 13 starts this year. Big Oriole crowd making some noise for Matt Weeders. 1 0 delivery. He'll take it. 1 1. Boy, he's got a lot of guts. He just keeps peppering that outside corner and moving it around. I certainly see why he's had success. Over now his 16th career as a reliever and a starter. Now you see Carps move behind the runner. One ball, one strike delivery. Weeders takes it inside, two and one. Chris Tillman has got a chance to be the winner in this game. The other thing he's done, I mean, he's won six ball games himself. But the Orioles have won nine. Of his first 13 starts, games he started in, so he's given the Orioles a chance to win, even if he has not been the one to pick up the win himself. Manny Machado with a double, now at third. And Davis over there with the intentional pass. 2 1 delivery to Weeters, and that's inside and low. 3 and 1. Starting the day, Miguel Cabrera led the American League in intentional walks with eight. Chris Davis has tied him if Cabrera hasn't had another one tonight. Now meeting at the mound to make sure on this 3 2 delivery, 3 1 delivery to Weeders. One runner goes and the pitch is up high and they're loaded. And that's going to be it for Dempster. So Ryan Dempster, a seven and two thirds innings performance for the Red Sox, but the Orioles able to get two runs early, one in the second, one in the third, able to make them stand up and now threatening to put more up on the board. The Farrell comes.
could pick up his seventh loss in this ball game. But what an effort. Oh, yeah, valiant effort. Uh, really pitched well. And as we told you, when he wins, those four wins, they get him a lot of runs. And when he loses, he would lose tonight, and they wouldn't score. He would have had seven losses and seven runs in the seven losses. So Koji comes on. We know him. Uh, traded a couple of years ago. One of the reasons the Orioles have had their success is the trade of Koji Urahara down to Texas. Uh, the Orioles get Chris Davis and Tommy Hunter in return. So he's doing what he usually does. Hardly walks anybody. Did hit a batter against the Angels. First time he's done that. And uh, you know, strikeout guy. 36 strikeouts. 26 innings. Fastball splitter. Occasional slider. But probably won't see that. And he jumps at you. 90, 88. Looks like it's about 95. So Koji O'Hara will come on and face J.J. Hardy with the bases loaded. Bottom of the eighth inning. Orioles with the 2 0 lead. There are two down. You see Hardy with the three grand slams in his career. He is one for nine with the bases loaded this year. O'Hara's delivery to him, and that is in there for a strike. You know, there is a slider. Well, he knows J.J. because he played with him. He, uh, he knows he's a great high ball hitter. Hardy's had only one at bat against him, 0 for 1. Here's the 0 1 delivery. Koji's worked two previous games against the Orioles in Boston, inning and a third, giving up no runs on one hit. There are the bases loaded. Machado a double, lead runner at third. Davis intentional pass on the walk to Weeders. Here's the 0-2 delivery, and Hardy will go down on three pitches. So O'Hara comes on and gets it done. No runs on a hit. The Orioles leave the bases loaded. Can I hear the seatbelts buckle, please? Here comes Jim. Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. Very thought of Jim Power and yet another outstanding ball game. There we go again. Two nothing lead. Ninth inning. The Orioles. Jim Johnson to try and wrap it up. So uh, JJ struggles. Gets blow four blown saves after uh, 14 in a row this year. 35 going all the way back into last year and then uh, makes some adjustments. Now eight in a row. And when it comes to the save department. So the Red Sox will try to get a runner on to get the tying run to the plate. That's where it all starts. Jim has two saves against the Red Sox this year. 14 out of 16 lifetime in saves against Boston. Ninth inning. Here is Carp, who will take the pitch for a strike. Carp 0 for 2. Lifetime off Jim Johnson. 0 for 2 in the ball game and a walk. The Red Sox have not scored. They have been shut out three times previously this year. The Orioles have three shutouts against opponents this season, none against Boston. 
The last time the Orioles shut out the Red Sox, September of 2006. Here at Camden Yards on a two hit performance with Bedard getting the win over Tim Wakefield. Hmm. Carp with a one ball, two strike count. See ya. Yep. During the streak of the blown saves, the velocity went up, the movement went down. Watch this ball run back. Been a high strike all night long. Carp, I don't, they can't complain about a two runs down, taking a ball right down the chute, but that ball runs back, and the higher pitch has been called by Corey Blazer all night long. One down in the ninth. Daniel Nava 0 for 2 and a walk, 1 for 7 in the two games. Jim Johnson is trying to become the major, major league leader in saves. Rivera's got 23. Grill's got 23 in the national. Jimmy's got 23. Yeah, it just looks so much more relaxed than when you know, 51 out of 54 last year. That's the most saves in baseball. Not a lot of angst when things are going well, and even though you know it's there. I mean, that's just the nature of the game. Nava with a one for five off him, and he hit him. That's the thing along with the walk that he did not want to do. Well, he didn't even move, and you don't have to. Got the protection. So Nava gets hit, brings a potential tying run to the plate. Yeah, I mean, really just leaves the arm there, and it hits it. Ducked away from it, takes away the wrists and the hands. And there's your base runner that we were talking about. Fourth hit batter by Jim Johnson this year. Iglesias a double and a single in the ball game. And a chopper. This could be it. Here's Hardy. Here's Flaherty relay. Miles win it. Jim Johnson leads the majors in save. The Orioles shut out the Red Sox for the first time since 2006. And they have won the first two of this four game set. You know, it's all about ground balls, and uh, so there you go. It's been a long time, 2006. And so Jim Johnson now nine straight saves, closes it out. And the Orioles move to within a game and a half of the division-leading Red Sox. We'll be right back.